Hey folks, Ola here, coming at you from the homestead with a brief little tutorial on fishing online tournaments. As you guys know, I fish a monthly challenge every month and sometimes throw in other little tournaments. And I've gotten a couple of requests from folks wanting just a little bit of information on those online tournaments. I'd like to share my experience with Tourney X. Not sponsored by them, don't work for them. That really is the only online tournament that I've ever used. So there are others, but this is the one I'm familiar with. So let's just dive right into Tourney X and see what we have here. First and foremost, you need to have a Tourney X account. And to do that, there you just go online and sign up. There's a free account, gives you just bare minimums for what you need to fish the tournament. And then they have what's called the premium account. That is $30 a month. And with that premium account, you just get a ton of data. Me personally, I'm an information junkie, so the more the merrier. I pay for my account. Let's actually go to the Tourney X website. So once you've created your online account, then you can come into the listing of tournaments here. All these teal boxes, each one is a tournament that's coming up. If you scroll down, these are tournaments that are already in work. Let's take this tournament here in Minnesota. Click on that baby. It brings up tournament information, the title of it, the director's name, what kind of fish, how much it costs to enter, which clubs are hosting it or sponsoring it. Sponsors here, you click this teal box right here to register for the tournament. Here are your start dates and times for the tournament. Then you might have some rules listed here. You could even have hyperlinks that link to the rules. I'll show you that here in a minute. Your payout, how, how deep the payout goes. And then here you have your competitors. Let me move out of the way. You've got quite a few on that one. 27 people are entered. So then it'll list it by who's in first place. This tournament is your top five fish. If you hover over any of these fish here, you get a black box that pops up. That box will show the date and time that the picture was taken and the date and time that the picture was submitted. And you see how they're all red. These fish have not been approved yet. If they were approved, they would show green. Let's click the fish. So you click on the fish and it actually brings up his uh, photograph that he submitted. There's his identifier. See this identifier, they allowed him to just write the number on a post-it. A lot of times you have to actually download the identifier tag and then fill it in. There's his ap approved measuring board. That's a hog trough. Good fish, nice smallie. So yeah, that fish is waiting for approval. Okay, so let's look at the difference between a paid and unpaid. Let's go to Let's do a tournament search and click that magnifying glass. And we're going to enter 19 for the year, 07 for the month. This should bring up all the tournaments for July. Okay, there we got a whole bunch, and a lot of them are KBFs. So let's pull up the Florida. Where's it at? Where's it at? So if I want to refine my search, I can go KBF. Let's go FL for Florida. There it is. So 1907 FL. Here's my current tournament. So we'll click on that. It's going to bring us up to the tournament director information, the sponsors, the rules. See, they actually have a hyperlink to the rules. Let's pull up the rules. These are KBF rules. If you go up to the top, you see there's a table of contents. If you go to, you can just click on Photo standards. This will tell you what's acceptable and what's not. There's the hog trough measuring device. It'll give you ex explicit instructions on what is approved and what's not. And then it's got areas that you actually can't touch, and that's the tail, the gill, the actual gills underneath the gill plate there, and the eyes and lips. You cannot touch them. It'll tell you that the fish's lips must be touching the end of your board right there. So very strict rules on the photos. Okay, let's go back to the challenge there. So if we scroll down on the challenge, we'll see 
everybody who's entered. We got 15 in this challenge this month. Now I'm going to show you the difference between a paid and an unpaid subscription. Here you have this guy. See these little gold X's? That means it's a premium account. This guy doesn't have it, so he's a freebie account. We'll click his. Basically, all you're going to see is a photo of him, his name, where he's home location, and his personal best fish for any tournaments. And we'll go back. Let's go down to my account. And you see I've got the gold X. So if you click on me, I have not submitted a fish yet. I haven't fished yet this month. You see you got a whole lot more information. You got my name, my location, my uh, avatar picture, this year's stats. It includes how many fish I verified, my average length, how many first place finishes, zero for this year. I've got four top 10 finishes and I have a couple of badges. And you've got my personal best fish, my hero shot, what style of uh, kayak I use. And if I have sponsors here, I listed native watercraft pro staff. Then you scroll down and I've got my all time history. There's my all time averages, my top catches. And then it'll also list every tournament I've done on Tourney X. Pull up my June tournament. There's last month's tournament. Finished in 11th with 98 and a quarter. Here, that see the X's are green. That means these fish have been approved. They are good to go. They are scorable. So that's the paid account. A whole lot more information for an info junkie like me. So let's go look and see what's available in my, in a dashboard. Once you have signed up and you log in, you will go to your dashboard. This is what you'll see. From this dashboard at home, you could submit a catch. You can cull a fish, remove a fish, view standings, register for a tournament, get your tourney identifiers, join a team, create a team. This check-in, I'm not positive, but I think that's if you're on a live tournament and you're out on the water. And you can pull up different kayak fishing clubs. So this first one, submit a catch. I don't know if I've Maybe I've done it once from home. 90% of the time, you're going to submit your catches while you're out on the water from your cell phone, from the mobile app. But let's take a look at this. I don't think it's going to work because I don't have my location data turned on. So on your cell phone, you have to have the data turned on because it uses that location for a stamp, which we'll talk about in a minute. So you have to share location. Sorry if I keep looking over. I've got another computer screen. And yeah, I don't have my location turned on. So I can't show you that. But basically, this submitted catch is going to work just like it does from the uh, mobile app. Same with the call a fish and remove a fish. But this is where you view the standings. Click that. It's going to bring up all your current tournaments. Plus, you got a tab for past tournaments. So everything I've fished in Tony X will be in there. So if we go to our current tournament, click that, it's going to show me July. And if I'm fishing more than one tournament, all of them will be listed. So I have no submissions yet to look at. So we'll go back to the dashboard. Here you can also register for a tournament. Looks about like that other registration screen. These are all tournaments that are open. You can search the tournaments in the same method that you used from the other screen. Then this one's important. Your identifiers, each tournament that you sign up for, the night before the tournament starts, you'll get a unique identifier for every tournament that you fish. Now, it may be unique to you, or it might just be unique to everyone in that particular tournament. But if you click it, it'll show everything you're registered for. You click here for the identifier, boom. And I just print right from the screen. Just right click and select print. I would just go right to print. Then once you printed it, you fill in your name here. And this identifier must be in every picture that you submit. And if you're in multiple tournaments, you're going to have a bunch of identifiers. If you're in five tournaments, 
you'll have five identifiers in the picture. You know, and once again, you have to look at the rules because some of them don't allow you to do more than one tournament photo. You know, you can't do five tournament identifiers in the same photo. So they may have their own rules. So then you have this map here, which I'm not going to open because basically for the paid account, if you click on this, it pulls up a Google Maps style of map and it'll have a pinpoint for every fish that you have logged. Now that's visible only to you and to the tournament director. So we don't want to, we don't want to do that right here, right now. So let's jump over to the mobile app now. Tony X, they have it for Android and for iPhone. Basically, it's just going to be a really stripped down version of the same dashboard, but you have the same features. Once again, you can register for a tournament here and you just scroll through click the register button, it'll bring up same information, you check the same boxes, go through the same process there. You pull up your identifiers to get the same information. All your tournaments, tournaments will be listed there. Boom, same thing, pulls up your identifier. Manage a catch, click the tournament that you're currently in. If you had fish here, you could swipe on them and delete them and if you had cold fish you click this and it would show all the fish that you had called it's kind of hard without any fish submitted these three items here are what you're going to use on the water 90 percent of the time you'll pull up your standings every tournament that you have in here will show up let's pull up last month's boom it'll show you everyone who's in the tournament and if you click on your name, just 11, click my name and brings up all my fish. And you can scroll, let's pick the bottom fish, click that, and it brings up my fish. And you can scroll this window as well. The good thing about the mobile app is that uh, when you pull up a fish picture, you can really zoom into it. But there you go, if you wanted to make sure it's touching the line, you got a really good view of it. So back we go. That's your standings. When you catch a fish, the normal procedure I use, when I catch a fish, I photograph it right away and then release the fish, get it, get it gone. And I may not submit it for a while. I might even catch a few more fish. Photograph them, let them go. And in that case, I may decide to send them to the live well and just hold them. So when I'm ready to submit a fish, let's say that I've fished for four hours and caught two fish and I want to do them at the same time. So you would take your pictures, release your fish, and you come in here to submit catch. Click on the tournament. Now, if you click capture photo, it brings up your camera so you can actually capture the photo right now. But 100% of the time, I'm, I've already taken my picture. So I click browse and it'll bring up my most recent picture. So I'll click this one. That's a bad picture, by the way. And in there, it loads your photograph and you click inches and we're gonna say it's 18.5. And then you click Submit. It's gonna ask you, do you wanna send it to the leaderboard? Do you wanna send it to LiveWell? If I click leaderboard, boom, it goes up right away to the scoreboard. But I'm going to put it in my tank and hold it. So we do that. Okay, it says it's added to the live well. Click OK. Then I may fish some more. And I catch another fish. I'm going to submit another one. Back to the tournament. I'm going to browse for a photograph. Once again, I go to where I saved the picture. And this one is 20 inches. And then I click Submit, send it to the live well. Then I go fish some more. And then later at the end of the day, or even the next day, or even at the end of the tournament, then I can go to my live well, and it's like, oh, I still have two fish here waiting to be submitted. At this point, I can click the Send All button, 
and give it a few minutes and it'll upload all the pictures to the leaderboard. Or I can click on a picture and drag it and it brings up the delete box. Boom, that's a bad picture. I don't want to submit that one. Same thing with this. Drag it to the left, delete it. Before you do that, make sure you have another picture to replace it. So that's the live well. And that about does it for this mobile app. Like I said, it's very stripped down. It's basically what you're going to need on the water. And it's what I use 99% of the time. Like I said, most of the tournaments I do are 30-day challenges. And then occasionally I'll throw in a three-day challenge with it, like that Mother's Day one. And I've got my tourney tag here. They sell these little, it's just a little plastic cover. It has like an armband. It's for, it's really for airport workers. They wear them like that. But I've actually put this tag, this is my identifier that I printed off. And I actually put this tag right on, right on my board. And then I just slide it out of the way as needed. This is going to mess up my green screen. But uh, yeah, you can just slide it out of the way as you need. And I keep a spare one of those already filled out and in my little dry tray. You'll notice on these, these hog troughs, a lot of people will put stickers and do lines. That helps you see that the fish's nose is against the board. Because if you don't have that, this board's all one color. It's the same as the little bump area here and you can't really tell that the fish's nose is against it so we all color those in and put stickers so you can definitely see this hog trough also floats it has foam in here so like 20 bucks everybody says they break but i haven't had an issue with them no problems with me yet knock on wood so i'll put links to all of this stuff in the description anything that i've talked about or i'll put all that in the uh, description for this video. So if you guys have any questions, please just put them down below. I'm no expert, but I've fished a few and uh, I've had a few DQs, trust me, for measuring devices, unapproved measuring devices. So I've made mistakes. My fish have flopped off the board, been there and done that. So yeah, that's Tourney X in a nutshell. Stay tuned. Next week, I'm planning on all three days of iCast and I'm sure there's going to be just a ton of stuff to see out there. Just a ton. I don't know if I'll live stream yet just because of connectivity issues and whatnot, but I will definitely have my cameras there. I'll be probably talking to vendors and videoing and just going over some of the new stuff that I see. It's going to be a good time. And I hope to see a bunch of you folks out there. Shoulder update. It's still... A little sore. I'm not taking the naproxen anymore and I can still feel a little twinge of something. My primary doctor believes that I have a micro tear in the rotator cuff which should heal on its own without surgery. But I must rest it and I've done that. I haven't fished since the Everglades so yeah I'm going crazy. But uh, iCast is going to help next week. I'll be all busy with that. And I got a new reel the other day, so I put fish in line on that. So I'm staying busy. Anyway, let's end this video. And I will see you guys next week with some iCast footage.